Right, we got kind of off on clearing equations of decimals in that last um, video. So let's go ahead and finish our last example of clearing equations of decimals. So our first step here is to do the distributive property. Now, this can be nasty because multiplying, multiplying decimals isn't always fun. When I give you examples of this, though, I'm going to make it easy on you. So 0.25 times x is giving me 0.25x and then plus a negative, and then 0.25 times 0.1. Well, 25 times 1 is pretty easy, right? And that's going to give me 25, and now I have 1, 2, 3 decimals total. So this is going to be 0 0.025, and that's what I mean by I make it easy on you when I, I do give you examples like this. And then we have on the right, uh, on the right side of this equation 0.5x, plus 0.75. Nothing happens there. We don't have any distributive property. Now we go through and we're going to count our number of decimals. There's two here, there's one here, there's three here, and there's two here. So the largest number is the three decimals right here. And so that means our LCD is going to have three zeros in it. So one, two, three. So our LCD is a thousand. So we're going to multiply that term and that term and that term and that term by 1,000, which is going to move the decimal three places to the right in each case. So one, two, three places to the right gives me 250x plus three places to the right here is going to give me negative 25. And that's equal to one, two, and three places here gives me 500x. And then finally, plus three places to the right, one, two, and three, gives me 750. Now I'm ready to solve this. There are no decimals left. So I'm going to move the constants to one, or the variables to one side. So the 250 is gonna go over here because 500 is larger. So minus 250x and minus 250x. And that's going to give me that a negative 25 is equal to 250x plus 750. And now what I need to do is move the 750 to the other side. So I'll add the opposite of that, a negative 750 to both sides of the equation. And now I'm going to get my negative 775 divided by 250x. And then I'll multiply by the reciprocal. That'll look like division, because it is. And then on this one, I want to simplify before I divide. So I'm going to divide both this and this by 25. I'd show that, but it's going to get really messy, and I don't have room on the next page. So 25 will go into 77 three times with two left over, and 25 goes into 25 uh, one time. 25 goes into 25 one time, 25 goes into 0, 0 times. And that's what my x is equal to. And this is negative because that was negative. And then finally, that means my x is equal to, division by 10 moves the decimal one place in to the left, so this is a negative 3.1. Remember that when an equation starts in decimals, it needs to end in decimals. Starts in fractions, needs to end in fractions. All right, what we need to talk about now is the fact that there are three different types of equations. We have a type of equation called conditional equations, we have a type of equation called contradictions, and we have a type of equation called identities. Conditional equations are equations that give us an answer, an x equals a number. There's one single solution that satisfies the equation. A contradiction is a type of equation that gives you a false statement, and there is no number that will satisfy these. There's no solution, or the solution set is a null set. And then finally, the identity is a type of equation where everything will satisfy the equation, every real number. It gives us a true statement when we go to solve these. So what we're going to have to be able to distinguish between is the, the naming, the type is the name, what we're going to get when we go to solve these, and then actually what the solution is, what values satisfy those. And so now um, I'm going to show you those three types in the next video.